Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Um, it's been a pretty decent week, I think. I got a little bit of my reading mojo back. Not like it should be, uh, but I finished five books this week. Three are very short, <laughs> so it's not as impressive as it sounds by a long shot, but um, the only new addition I have to my shelves this week is We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. I've heard about her for years that she's really hilarious and astute and I mean so I picked up this used copy looking forward to that so for books I've read this week I listened no I listened to the third but first I'll review the second in the Winston Brothers romantic comedy series essentially this is Grin and Beard It by Penny Reed so last week I talked to you about how I didn't like the main female character, Sienna, she was pretty annoying. Uh, she grew on me and they made her less annoying. <laughs> I, I don't know, or her character was developed more or better, I'm not sure. Um, but she was less annoying, which is a relief. I, I like her and Jethro together. I think they're a good couple. But what I didn't like is that it was... Um, a little more surfacey than the previous book, than the first book in the series with Dwayne and Jessica. They were friends, frenemies, enemies, lovers um, in the first book since childhood, you know. Um, and Sienna is new to town. She's a movie star. I have to give a big shout out to Danny at Spinelli Speaks. We were talking about it and she said, you know what, it's just like Notting Hill. So Grin Bearded is just like Notting Hill, set in Eastern Tennessee with a, um, is she Mexican, Mexican, huge, famous movie star. So it was good. It was fine. I liked the other brothers in general more. I liked getting to know the town better and about the Iron Wraiths, which is this really like nasty motorcycle gang that kind of partially runs parts of the town and you know, it was fine. I gave it three stars. Didn't love it. It was it was good. It made me chuckle. Fine. So the third one that I also finished just last night even, that was on audio for a change, which is wonderful. That third one is Beard Science with my favorite brother so far, Cletus. I can't believe that anyone would beat Cletus for my favorite. But he is wonderful. He's so quirky and smart and sneaky and caring and he's just fantastic. So he gets together with Jennifer, who is the banana cake queen, if you've listened to this series. She initially blackmails Cletus into helping her find a husband. She's 22, I believe, very much under her parents' thumb, works like a dog for the bakery, making banana cakes. Um, very sheltered life. She was homeschooled. She has one sibling who is trying to join the Iron Wraiths Motorcycle Club. So she doesn't really have any family and no one really cares about her. And she feels like the only way to get out of her claustrophobic existence and get away from her parents where they would be okay with it and she would be okay with it is if she could find someone to marry her. She just wants to be married and have kids. She said it might be regressive, but it's what I really want. It's what I've always wanted. So she blackmails Cletus, not intending to at first, but it works out um, to help her find someone to marry her, find her a good match. So Cletus, you know, tries to get her to break out of her shell and she goes on a fake date with Billy, one of the other brothers, and things develop from there and Cletus realizes that he loves her and she slowly realizes that she loves him. Of course, there's, you know, misunderstandings, but it didn't seem as capery, ridiculous as a lot of other romance series tend to get with stuff like that, so... I just enjoyed the heck out of it. I related really hardcore to Jennifer for a lot of reasons. And um, like I said before, I love Cletus. So I'm giving this one four and a half stars, rounding it up to five on Goodreads, which why can't we do half stars on Goodreads? I know everyone talks about it, but it's so annoying. There are so many books that are like in between, you know? Anyways, so that was Beard Science. I'm hoping to start the fourth one today, maybe, or tomorrow. I don't know. And I think I'm going to do audio again. The narrators uh, were really, really good. I don't remember the names. Hopefully, it'll be on the picture up here. So, for books that I read in physical form, 
First up is this very small little collection I'd rather be reading. This is artwork and essays about books for book lovers. This is by Guinevere de la Mer, but has essays also by Maura Kelly, Ann Patchett, and Gretchen Rubin. And for the three ladies on the bottom here who included essays, they've all been previously published elsewhere. So it's a sweet little book. I like the cover. When I saw this cover online and heard it talked about, I thought it was like a coffee table book or a little bit larger than a regular hardcover, but it's pretty slim. So here, you know, sample poetry about books and then a nice picture. The essays are in colored pages. You know, it's just, it's a lovely little book. Perfectly little gifty book for bookish people. Um, I'm, I gave it three stars. It's really nice, maybe three and a half, which might've gotten rounded to four. Doesn't matter. Liked it, really enjoyed it. And thank you to my friend Jenna for passing it on to me. I think I will pass it on myself and have it delight somebody else. So after that, I'm so excited about this. This is a new addition to the library, which is ridiculous. <laughs> and they only have this one, this first one, which is so annoying. It's Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I know that this was a web comic and I can read them online. I like to read books, thank you very much. So this is such a sweet story of, oh my gosh, I forgot their names. Nick and Sam, Charlie, Nick and Charlie. So Charlie is out. He was sort of outed the year before. This is in high school, obviously, in the UK. And obviously, how would you know that? It's British. <laughs> um, and he's sort of, Charlie has this guy he's making out with, but this guy is not out. He has a girlfriend, or he's bi or a pan. I don't think it's ever really specified because he's not the main guy. So really, who cares about him? He's kind of a jerk. He just uses Charlie to make out with when he wants to make out with him. And Nick um, is on the rugby team, sees Charlie, and no one really knows if he's gay or straight. He's not too sure himself. He's had girlfriends before. But he and Charlie develop this friendship. Charlie joins the rugby team, and they get closer. And it's just, it's really, really sweet. I've been itching to read this for a over a year, way over a year, I'm sure. And finally, the library got a copy in. I mean, so now I just have to harass them for volumes two and three. Thanks very much. So if you want to read this really sweet story, it's nicely illustrated. I like that it's just greens, this like sea foamy green in different tones and black and white and gray. It's lovely and darling. And I just, I loved it. So four stars for sure. And then last up, I gotta look for a page here first. It doesn't have uh, naked breasts in it. Uh, okay, I'll do this. <laughs> so this is very slim little graphic novel, When I Arrived at the Castle by Emily Carroll. She had that um, creepy story collection a few years ago. I'll try and insert an image of it here, which I read and really enjoyed. Um, she uses apparently this color palette a lot, black, white, gray, and red. So this t just drops you right in the story of this cat lady, an actual like cat person. You don't see her here. You see her in profile here. Um, who she goes to the castle and she's supposed to kill something. And she's talking to herself about how she doesn't know why she has to do this herself. And you know, other people have been here before and et cetera, et cetera. So, she comes in and finds the Countess, which is the glamorous lady you see at the beginning. And the Countess says, oh, I know you're not human. I know why you're here. Why don't you take a bath first? So that this cat lady takes a bath and then something like pounds on the door, but there's nothing there when she opens it. And she peeks through the hole of the bedroom of the Countess and finds this like wreath thing coming out of her skin, which goes right back in again. So this is an erotic horror graphic novel. Um, it's dark, gothic for sure, and it ends kind of creepily and brutally. You know, you kind of expect it to end this way, but there's this weird attraction between these two ladies. Even though the Countess knows that this cat woman is here to kill her, she thinks she can outsmart her and survive because she has before. Um, not what I expected at all. I didn't know what I expected, first of all, but this was sort of a surprise at how um, bloody and gruesome it was. I don't know. I liked it, though. What does that say about me? Not sure, but it was good. 
Um, I recommend it if you like Emily Carroll's work or if this is the kind of thing that you would go for normally, if it's interesting, see if it's out there. It was very brief reading. I mean, I don't think it's 80 pages. I don't know for sure. There's no page numbers, which is so annoying. Can we all agree we should have page numbers? There's nothing anywhere. Nothing. So, three, three and a half. Decent. Good for Halloween and October spooky reading for sure. So that's me for this week. Like I said, I'm getting my reading mojo back a little bit, not just wanting to watch movies and TV all the time. Um, I have to work on book two prize reading. I've got one book that's got a hold on it from the library. So I need to read that sharpish and get that in. Um, working on my stack of graphic novels still from the library. That's coming up due. I am going to have to renew some of those. Oh, for the I Capture the Castle readathon, which I totally didn't read the book, <laughs> but I did participate in the bingo card. No bingos anywhere, um, but I did watch the sun rise over um, Stonehenge on summer solstice morning. That was anticlimactic since it was so cloudy, it just got brighter. Bit of a bummer, but still kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah, it, that was fun. Next time something like this happens, I hope I can get myself in gear and actually read the book and not just do the fun stuff on the side, you know. Um, other than that, just keep working on my stack. I very sadly, shamefully, I'm going to fess up here now and insert an image. So these are the books that I have pulled either to read or I'm in the middle of reading. There are 61 books in this picture, but there are four more that I forgot around the house. So it's really 65 books that I am in the middle of reading. None of these count. That's too many. I know this. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is reshelve the ones I haven't started and work through one at a time, hopefully, so I can focus on one book at a time and maybe keep it moving and finish some things up. This happens every once in a while where it gets to be this bad, but this is really bad. So that's what I'm going to be working on too. Book two prize, library books, graphic novels, and then working down that 65 book stack. So mm -hmm. that's it for me. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope the weather has been nice-ish, at least where you are, and um, you're all staying safe. So I will talk to you guys all very soon in the next one. Bye.